Hello and welcome to this tutorial series. This is where we're all going to learn about Blender and uh, to do to do that we need to download it. If you head to your search engine of choice, type in Blender, it should bring you to a page that looks like this, somewhat looks like this because this page is hosting Blender 3.6 LTS and wh what happens is Blender is constantly updated and improved this number keeps on ticking upwards. If you arrive here and it's a higher number, different looking screen, don't worry, you're in the right place with the download button. And if we hit that download button and just hit here, I'm going to download it for my Windows system. Okay, and you're going to dial download this packed version of Blender, which is a .msi. So we're going to save that version to your local drive, your PC. So choose a location where it's going to fit. Click Save. And that should start your down. I'm going to stop mine because I already have it downloaded. Here we are at the location where the uh, file downloaded to. I don't know if I can find it here. Here it is. And we just have to unpack this. So just double hit it. And it'll bring you through the setup wizard uh, just choose choose the version or the uh, prompts that make sense to you so I think there's a prompt for uh, your keyboard and mouse so. configuration if you have a system which hasn't seen blender before you will go through those steps and um, once that's finished then what you want to do is launch the software that you have installed. So once you've uh, installed your file and you click the launch, then you should arrive at this screen here. This is the navigation screen for Blender and this is your scene here. And the default scene comes populated with three things. The first thing is a cube known as the default cube and it sits at the world origin. Uh, so you can see the screen here has a red axis which is our x-axis and a green axis which is our y-axis and you can see them reflected here and you can see there's a third one which is the z-axis which goes in an up-down direction. So this is our default cube. This is a light uh, so we can see in our scene and this is the subject here is our camera so this is the point of view that will be rendered when we hit the render key so our default cube is just a, a stand-in you can keep it and save it and treasure it or you can simply hit delete get rid of it uh, do that I'm going to turn on my screencast keys. Now you won't have these in your interface, but um, this is so you can try and see uh, what's happening in terms of the commands and instructions I'm issuing by mouse and keyboard. So you should be able to see those here. Navigating within this space. So it's a 3D space. And if you have not worked with a 3D software before, this is probably the hardest thing to get used to initially it is moving comfortably through this 3D space. And the way you do that in Blender is by using your cursor. This is your mouse cursor here and your middle mouse button pressing down. So that will hold it and move it. And you can zoom in and out using your middle mouse scroll key. So scrolling up and down will move you in and out of the scene. So if you do get lost, you can look up here to see what's happening and see if sometimes it will help you get you reorientated in the scene. But I like to use the keyboard or keyboard commands for that. So if you do get lost while you're zooming around the place and you don't know where is up and where is down, uh, one of the simplest things to do is hit the uh, number one button on your keypad if you hit one you're getting the front view 
of the uh, scene. All right. And if you hit seven, you're getting the top view of the scene. Okay. Seven, one. And if you hit three, you're getting a view from the right side over here. As if you were standing over here. And this is your front, and this is your top. So if you do get lost, you can do that. The other thing you may notice is, you know, what you want to do is move your, move your uh, default cube around. So we'll, we'll play with that next. So if you select the cube, so you do that by just uh, left clicking with your mouse. You can see it happening there and it glows orange. So what you can do is move your move your uh, cube. You can do that by hitting G and you can see it turns white and then you can just move it around your scene. Pop, pop it anywhere you want. Your choice. But say for instance you want to bring it back to the center here or you want to move it to a specific spot. We have another tool to help us do that and that is this uh, second cursor. You can see it's sitting here at the origin uh, with this uh, red and white dashed line around it. We select this up here. Now, instead of our cursor moving the object in the scene, it's moving the second cursor. And this is our kind of our placement cursor. What this can do is you can nominate places for your objects to go or for actions to happen around that that object. So we've got our cube over here and say we want to move it to the world origin. We've already moved this cursor all over the place and it's stuck to our cursor, our mouse cursor. So how do we get that to the origin? To get this cursor to the origin, you go shift S and just say cursor to world origin. All right. So it's snapped to the world origin there. That's useful because now we can use this as a pointer for our object. So our object is sitting, oh, sorry. Uh, let me do that again, shift S, cursor to world origin. And you have to click back out of it, or you'll do what I did there, which is move, continue moving it. So you wanna leave that where it is, because that's where you want your object to go. And now you wanna be able to select your object, left clicking to select, and then we're going to Get this object to go to the world origin. So we go selection to cursor here. There it is, it's sitting at the world origin. And you can see it's sitting halfway up and down on our, our, our uh, axis there. And that is because Blender uses this little orange dot on the object as the center. So this is the center of the subject and everything is calculated relative to that. So when you go, hey, I want it at the world origin, it snaps to that location with that orange dot being the center. And that orange dot is the origin of the object. So every object you can create in Blender is going to have that origin. So let's create another object. So we go Shift A. And now we have a whole new menu popping up here. And we have a whole ton of options to choose from. So these are all the things you can add to your scene. So Blender is opt added in this default cube, but suppose we want a second cube. So we go Shift A, and this is a mesh. All right, so we go Shift A, and let's add in another cube. Where'd that cube go? Well, when you add an object into a scene, it's going to go to the point where your placement cursor is. In actual fact, there are two cubes here right now. And you can see that in the menu here. So this is everything that's in your scene is captured here. Um, these items here are extra things I have because I have a load of add-ins for uh, using Blender. And by default, these are added in here for me, but you will just have this collection. And you'll have these two cubes if you followed along thus far. So we have our camera, our cube, we have a second cube, and we have the light. So let's find that second cube here. It's sitting in exactly the same space as our first cube. So we can move it, just go G, and then pop it out. 
and there it is. So let's delete this one. To delete it, just hit the delete key. It's gone. Um, and just to sh show you what happens, uh, let's say we want to add another cube. Shift A, mesh, cube. Look at that. It's added at our placement cursor, not at our mouse cursor, not at the world origin. So you need to keep track of where this cursor is when you're adding new things into a scene. So for ex example, suppose we want everything sitting at the world origin again. The way we do that is shift S cursor to world origin. And then we want to add in another cube, shift A mesh cube. And there it is at the world origin. So now we have three cubes and you can see that here, cube, cube one. Cube. Blender will keep on naming these up. You can go in here, double click and change the name. We call this default cube. Let's get that right. Okay, so that's our default cube. And that's the cube we added in. And that's the cube we added in. When we did the add in, there were a whole ton of options here. And we're only talking about meshes for the moment. We'll just concentrate on those. These items are meshes. What does that mean? Well, it means a whole load of things to Blender. Let me delete all these cubes. Let me delete that one. I'm deleting that one. Here, we're still, we're in what's known as object mode. This is useful for just moving things around and arranging things. But if you want to go in there and actually change the geometry of the object you're looking at, then you want to edit it. We're going to go into edit mode. So this is the most common other mode you'll probably be operating in. Edit mode means that you can see a whole lot of extra things about this geometry. And it's made up of faces. So if you hit here, this is what this is, faces. So you're selecting faces. This one here is lines. We're selecting lines. And this guy here, points. So these are all the points that were used to construct that shape. And you can select them. And the real fun part is you can move them. You can move them the same way you move the object. Press G and pull in a, a direction. And you can move this guy around any way you want. Same with this. Moving it all over the place. But suppose you really don't like the way that has turned out and you want to go backwards. You can go backwards in Blender by holding Control Z and that's moved us back one step. And now we're back to our original cube. And we're still in edit mode and that's fine but a lot of times you might actually want to be able to see through your object, see what's going on on the other side, or view it in different ways. Let's come out of edit mode and go to object mode. So up here is a panel that's going to allow you to change the way everything looks or appears in your viewport. Click this one. This is our wireframe. All right. This is just simple rendering of the object. There's no lights. This is giving you a little bit more information about the object, a little bit of lighting. So it has the lighting. So if you remember, we did have a light in the scene. This is it. So the light's over here. This side is in shadow. But it's still not rendering it fully. To view the item fully rendered, with your shadows and so on, we do this. And now this is what it looks like fully rendered under the current settings. You can hit zero and that gives you the view through the camera. And if you want to see what the effect the light is going to have on that, well, it might be more easier to see what's going on if we put in another item into this scene so we can see what's happening with the shadow. We go add, mesh, and this time we'll add in a plane. 
and where the plane's going to appear. It's going to appear with its origin right here at your uh, placement cursor. So let's add in our object. Add mesh plane. There it is. All right. Don't click on it. Uh, what we want to do is make it bigger. How are we going to do that? Well, we, we can make it bigger by hitting S. And you can see now, like we had with the G and the move, now with the S we have a white outline around it, which means we're ready to do something with it. And we've got a little arrow here that's pointing both directions, which means we can move it. We can make it smaller, but we actually want to make it bigger. So let's do that. There we go. So you scale it by just hitting S and moving the mouse. We go back in and do it as many times as you want. This is our cube here sitting in the middle here. So you can see it's rendered in this scene. In this scene you've just got a basic lighting setup, no shadows. And this one here is no light at all. It's just got a default scene for you. This one here, wires. So we've got a wireframe for our plane, a wireframe for our cube. And once again, the plane is made up of the same object. So if we go in here, edit, we have a face. Let's do that. Select the face. That's the face. Lines. We can select the lines, one or all of them. And we can select the points. All of them. If you want to select all of them at one or, or add to your selection you select one say for example you want to select three of them then you hit shift select 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 now you've got all of them do it again that's one and then shift hold down shift and continue using your box select for the rest of them so there we have that okay and i suppose all these views are very useful when you get into editing things. Say, for example, we're here. We want to go to edit mode. Can't see very much or a lot, really. We can't see through this plane in the current mode. I suppose we want to do that to be able to move these items around. So if you hit here, you can see through the plane and you can see all the items. You can see we can only select the object that we entered edit mode in. So when we edit, entered edit mode, it was the plane was orange okay so when we hit edit mode when we go into that mode we can't edit the corners of this cube or the lines or any faces or anything like that all we can do is select for the item we entered edit mode in which was the plane these are all editable you can see but the cube is not you can still like this. I suppose we do want to edit the cube then we select it and go into edit mode and now we we're only selecting everything associated all all the facets associated with the cube not the plane. Suppose we want to edit both what do we do? Click the plane and now we want to extend our selection so same again shift click and you can continue doing that with all the objects you want to edit and then go into edit mode and now when you clicked your cursor here you can select everything that's everything that we entered edit mode are in that was selected is now editable editable in edit mode all right so now let's go back to our camera view let's talk about object transformations and how to do them Right now we've got a cube, it's sitting at the world origin. If I change the view here to wireframe and we can see through the object, you can see the object's origin and I can hide the object by going H, hide objects, and I can get it back by using Alt H. Um, it's world or it's the object's origin is sitting at the world origin. If we want to change the position of the object, we've already talked about that. It's G, and if you want to lock it to an, or, uh, a, an axis, you can do that. Let's go backwards, Control-Z. 
But if you want to change the rotation of the object, we want to set it on its diagonal. Let's change it. So you can see all I do is hit OR, rotate, and it moves around its origin. So you can see as I change its rotation, you can see the numbers changing here. Let's put it back to the start position here. When you introduce an object into a scene, all these values will be default values. So zeros for location and rotation, scale will be one, and by default the dimensions for this cube is two meters. If you want to change the rotation, let's just do it from this angle. So we're just gonna hit R and start rotating the object. You can see all these numbers start going and changing as we rotate the object. Uh, so they've all changed. Uh, you can change the rotation of the object by using your cursor. It will always revolve around the object's origin. In this case, this orange dot here. We can set this back to zero. We can just type in zero for each one of these values. And we're back to the default setting. And equally, we can use this uh, menu here to change the rotation of the object. We only want to rotate along the z-axis. Just right click on the values and move your mouse left or right and that will change the rotation of the object. Let's change it back to zero. If for instance you wanted to change the rotation on every axis then all you need to do is right click on all the values and then move your mouse left or right and that will change all those values. Let's get it back to the default setting. So that's rotation. Similarly you can just take individual axes and change it. But suppose we want to change the scale of the object. Right now the default is 1, 2 meters we can hit the S button. We've got an arrow. We've got our cursor with arrows and we can scale by hitting S and moving your mouse in and out to the origin of the object. And you can see once again here the menu values are changing so you can see the scale and dimensions are changing to match what's happening on screen. And as same way as rotation you can go in here and set all of these back to the default, which is 1, 2 meters. Or you can change the values here. You do that by one well, same thing as rotation. Left click your mouse and then move your mouse left or right to change the scale. Highlight everything and then left or right will scale everything. Suppose we have a cube and we want to scale just on one axis. We can do that too. So we're highlighting the object, S to scale, and then the axis that you want to scale on, you hit that letter plus Alt simultaneously. And that will allow you to scale just in one axis. So for instance, we want to scale on the Z axis. So we've highlighted our object. We're hitting S and Alt and Z and the Z axis becomes highlighted and now we scale just on that axis. Uh, similarly, we can do that with the X axis. So S to scale and Alt X and now we're just scaling on the X axis. We can change the origin of the object. So for instance, everything has been scaled right now relative to that central point. We want to change that. We can do that by moving our placement cursor to the location we want to scale from. So instead of scaling from here, we're going to scale from here. The way we do that is we move the placement cursor here. This now is the place we're going to scale from. And then we have to make the object origin move to that location. So we want to move the origin to that location. We go object, set origin, 
and we're going to set the origin to the 3D cursor. We can place that origin anywhere. We can place it on the object or outside the object, which may be required sometimes. This is where our placement origin is now. We highlight our object and we go object set origin origin to 3D cursor and let's see how that works we still have our object selected we can go scale and now we're scaling from that point which can be useful in some cases we can set the origin to back to the center of the geometry to the 3D cursor we'll stop it at this point this is actually part one of a two-part tutorial series because there's too much really for, for one session and in the next one we'll be looking at uh, just giving an introduction to lighting rendering object, object uh, transformations and we'll be rendering out a scene just for practice so if you're interested in that uh, make sure and hit the subscribe and you the notification so you you'll know when that's come out um, I hope you got something out of this and it sets you on your journey to learning blender 